Hello and welcome to season two, episode 10 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do raw edge satin stitch applique. I hope that you guys enjoy today's episode and that you are in the chat and typing your name and where you're viewing from. And so you can see we have four different camera angles all working right from the start, which is a big improvement. And I'm gonna be using the Caterpillar Light tablet today, which is one of my favorite tools. One of the things I do with it is place actual patterns beneath this pad that you can actually cut on. So we can take a pattern and the pattern is available inside of the school. It's already in the school. If you're not familiar with, with what I'm saying when I'm mentioning the school, I do have a free online school called Create with Claire Rowley, and it's built on the Mighty Networks. I did pin it to the top of the chat, and then at the end there will be links, and periodically I'll probably share as well. And feel free to ask questions periodically throughout. Generally works better if you ask questions while I'm actually sewing on that particular thing because my brain can only retain so much. Today I'm gonna to be using our Fuse and Fuse fusible stabilizer that is printable if you anchor it to a piece of inkjet paper and then insert it into your printer it allows you to actually print right on top of it, skipping the tracing step. However, if you don't have a printer, you can still just trace your designs using the Caterpillar light tablet. So that's what you see here. These are already printed out. And I've, this pattern actually does not matter which way the designs are. I designed this as a basic applique pattern. So you can take and place things right beneath this. Isn't that nice? And then you can lay your fabric on top and trace or take our, our actual stabilizer and lay it on top. And you can see that you can see beneath it if I hadn't already traced, which I saved this one so that you could see me trace one. This I have the paper actually taped, or the stabilizer actually taped to the paper or the pattern. Move this over so that you can see. Hi, Tina. Hi, Susan. Hi, Pearl Lucas. Sarah Lay. Better Days, also known as Amy. Lorinda. Donna, Sanja, my regulars are here. <laughs> so what do you think? Was this like the best start yet? I just wish I had already a sample sewn. I'm getting better. Not Sudi. I don't know what happened there. What are you guys talking before I got in here? So we're, anyone in Facebook and you haven't already allowed StreamYard to access your profile, you won't show up with your name and picture inside of what I see as I'm streaming live, which is StreamYard. So that is, this is the Caterpillar Ultra. It is the biggest of the three options. And it does have, it does have three levels of brightness. And you can get it at creativefeet.com, but the link is right in the description of the video already. 
I'm doing great today. Yay. <laughs> I can't go past five o'clock because I have to go to UPS. So we have a time limit, which is partly why I'm not going to be as distracted or easily distracted. Okay. So what we've got here is applique. How many of you have done it before? Have any of you struggled to have your satin stitch be consistent all the way around the pattern? Or had trouble just getting your pieces secured to your fabric? I decided to actually make a pillow. I'm doing a sunflower theme in my living room. And some of it is inking, which will be other episodes coming up. Tinkerbell, would you like to start the day with a hello? Come here. Nope, just wants to stare at me. She's like, what are you talking about? Who are you talking to? <laughs> so you're gonna need, if you wanna do this pattern, you're gonna need just four fabrics. The fabric you're going to applique on, which is what I have here, which is a heavy fabric, kind of like a upholstery weight. It actually is an upholstery fabric. And then you need two different shades if you want, because you can actually just use the same colored paddles all the way around. And uh, let's see here. Just to remind you, if you look at this, you'll see I want to go on. Peter's a little slow. So if you're looking at this on the left-hand side, you'll see the dark fabric, and that is what I'm cutting out now. The actual pillow pattern is designed for a 14-inch square pillow. So you would need a 14-inch base material or a little bit bigger. Not, it doesn't hurt to make it bigger when you're doing the actual project. And then you can always square it off afterward. Cutting behind the scenes here. Let's see. And just so you know, I have plans for other patterns releasing soon. I have this one. This is my Bird of a Feather series of patterns that I'm going to be releasing soon. And we will have video to support each of the patterns. My computer's lagging a little bit today. But I'm not. Are you guys all rested and ready to sew? Any of you actually have your machines on? I'm actually using my upholstery scissors. Oh, why that background didn't come on. Oh, well. Perfection is in our future. <laughs> Maybe. Upholstery scissors is wise if you're going to cut upholstery. They're designed with like a snub end that makes it so that if you do cut to the tip, you don't bend or cause the scissor blades to bow. This fabric's relatively heavy. I probably don't need to actually back it with a stabilizer to prevent it from puckering. And if you're not familiar with puckering is it's when your fabric wrinkles this fabric was actually taped with shipping tape terrible my first applique to make you guys feel better and also to be honest was so bad the stitching we had a store and it had 16 foot high walls so the ceiling was that high and i took my quilt and we got the ladder out and I hung it all the way up to the top so that people viewing it could not see the stitch quality. That was before my satin edge foot. So if any of you have had trouble with a satin stitch, know that you're not alone. And some people just are not even brave enough to even try, not even start. Have any of you ever not, have not started yet? Thumbs up if you have not ever tried applique but wanted to, secretly wanting but not trying. Some upholstery fabric has a paste background or back side of it. 
And I thought it'd be nice to show you something besides cotton. But I'm going to put cotton on top of it because I didn't have time to look and see through my upholstery fabrics if I had sunflower fabrics. You're watching on your Kindle and chatting on your phone. You're getting better too, Susan. <laughs> you guys are getting better every day. I have my iron already warm. I'm going to bring it up. I still have to cut out my pieces. But one of the things I wanted to show you is the reason I have the pattern so that you can print it. I also group, whenever I design a pattern, I group all the colors or all the shapes that will be the same fabric color. So you can just cut out a group. And that's what I'm going to do now. And I don't know where my junkie scissors are, so I'm going to use my upholstery scissors for the paper. You want to waste as little fabric as possible. Right? Thumbs up if you agree. We do not like wasting fabric. I wonder how this is going to look with these colors. By the way, when you do tape this to your inkjet printer paper, make sure you tape all the way across the leading edge and the bottom. And I would do a couple little tapings along the sides as well. You've been sewing all day, Donna? You're inspiring. So we have different color fabrics here. I could use this as the center. Oh no, 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 don't turn off yet. But I just, but you know how the sunflowers center is seeds? So I'm gonna use this fabric because I think it looks like seeds. Don't you agree? Not maybe all the way seeds, seed-like. And I thought these fabrics complemented that fabric, even though there's no yellow in that. So these fabrics have a simple like marbling type of texture to it. And this is just a solid. So I think that these would go better with that. And I moved this board, trying to get it closer to me. My arms aren't long enough to go all the way over there. And did not get the other camera moved yet. But it's it's a good shot, right? We'll still be able to see. So you can see I've cut out just this group of petals. And if I leave this large area here, I will be ironing our fusible onto the fabric unnecessarily. So I'm going to cut even tighter, but not all the way because it's easier to cut when you're cutting out the pieces to have a little bit of the stabilizer extending out. My printer did not like my tape and it made it like a, it kind of smeared. And the type of tape that I used was shiny on the outside. So if you have a matte type of clear tape, that would probably be better. To save myself from having to iron each one of these pieces separately, I can now take this and apply it to the wrong side of this fabric. And this fabric is easily uh, identified as right and wrong. Make sure that if you have a crease that you iron it out if it's going to get anywhere near it. I'm all right, so I don't have to do any more. Make sure that the paper doesn't extend. I got to move this even further. I thought I made it better for myself. You know what? I'm going to have you look at this. While I readjust this camera. I even tried to have music. But... Next week. I 
think what's going on with this camera is that it's moving after I adjust it. So I guess you're gonna have to see the top of my head a little bit. Better than missing what I'm trying to show you though. The Eloise quilt, huh? I keep hearing about this. I need to learn more about that. Maybe we can do it. Hand stitching, Amy. Nice. I did some hand sewing the other day for my friend Terry. Every once in a while, it's nice. We've done a good job of satin stitch in the past, but not as well now. Well, yeah, it's kind of like riding a bike. You know, that first time you get on, after a while, you get a little scared. And I'm just clicking. Okay, we already did that. So now you guys are helping each other have a better experience. Welcome, Bob. This is Bob Riddle. He's the one that renamed the Satinage with the magic foot. <laughs> and that is the foot I'm gonna use today. Hi, Bob. <laughs> I like how you have your icon or your avatar as your cartoon. And the Satinage foot is this foot here. And it has a wire on it. And I will be showing you up close in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and press this. This is on cotton setting and no steam. And the reason we don't want steam is because this is solid. This is paper. And if you swish, if you have, if you like squish your steam setting, it'll shoot the steam out from beneath the iron and it, it could burn your fingers. Eventually I figure out where this goes. So then we want this to cool before we cut it. And this is cotton setting. So this basically, I skipped the tracing part and that's the slow part for me. Do any of you struggle to trace and have your lines be accurate? Thumbs up if you do. More activity, more action, the more chatting, the more sharing and liking, the better the algorithms like the video. And then we get a better positioning for future people to find us. I'm gonna go ahead and iron the other side as well. Where is this camera? It's over here. Closer to me. There we go, that's better. Now on this side I can shoot steam. But you notice my fingers are nowhere near the iron. The iron is, the steam is still ex escaping out from beneath. Better to have that iron really well then to find out it's lifting later. This is my fabric that I'm gonna use for the bigger petal. And if you're wondering about where to find the free pattern, it's inside of my school. If you haven't found your way there yet, it is pinned to the top of the chat create.clairowley.com so I got all these creases to get out we had snow this morning you guys what's your weather like we went from t-shirt weather and shorts a few days ago to snow not a lot but snow it got chilly overnight. And you notice I am ironing this time. I'm moving it across. It's not as critical to press when you're going to iron a shape with a fusible because the fusible is going to remove all the bias in this fabric. I only need it big enough for that. So we've ironed enough. 51, sunny and windy. We had a lot of wind this week. OK, 
you know, once again, I really need to trim this up so I don't waste fabric. And you can always use a little piece of fusible sometimes. So the scraps are not wasted either. Put them in a Ziploc bag and write the name of what the stabilizer is so you don't forget and then end up going, I don't know what it is. I'm just going to throw it away because I'm scared to use it. You can see here that is the tape that I had and it chipped, it chipped, it chipped off the tip of that petal. That's not fun. So you want to make sure you don't do that. This is when I sit there and expect you guys to say something out loud so I can hear you talk. I believe it's season two, episode 10 already. We've, I've opened up a new group inside the school. Inside is Fabrically Speaking Live. And every one of the episodes is in there. And then inside of each episode, I post where to get the pattern, if there is one for that episode, and supplies. So be sure. Oh, and by the way, this is um, exactly the same petals. Everything is exactly the same. So there's no mirroring needing to be done. If you're familiar with mirroring. If you have an applique and it's an R, and you iron the R so that you can read it onto the back of the fabric. When you cut out your R and you flip it over, it will be backwards. Another applique hint, if you're gonna work with really light fabrics, light color, like a really light white fabric and you're gonna lay it over this fabric, you would iron a permanent fusible stabilizer to the back of the fabric before you apply your pattern. And it makes your white fabric thicker You're wondering if you could use do the embroidery on a zigzag machine. Uh, if you're referring to last week's episode, should I have the shirt somewhere? Where I did this butterfly. This actually was done using a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. So yes. You can use a zigzag sewing machine with our Octi hoops. So I'm going to trim this up and then flip it over and press again with steam on the second side. And when I do this, I make sure that I cut bigger than the stabilizer that's there. And the reason I do is because if you leave a little fusing on there, you may not notice it one day and then iron it to something. And we don't want to have to clean our irons. Have any of you ever fused your fabric to your iron before? If you have, hit a thumbs up. These scissors are weird to cut with because they're really for upholstery. They work well on any fabric. Okay, so now flipping this over, the steam will go into this material better than the paper. But I still, as before, get your hands away. We have a little bit of interference with the camera right now. So I am using steam right now, but not on the paper side. One more piece to cut the center. So for today's lesson, we're going to use just a zigzag stitch. I already have tutorials on doing blanket stitch applique, such as our 
um, my wise owl shopping bag, which is a really good lesson for doing blanket stitch. And it's similar. And you can see the little pieces. The owl is on the machine. Hasn't been stitched yet. And we had to cut out all those pieces and then iron them on. So the same process is being done here. And then this pattern, this one is free motion embroidery and quilting. I mean, free motion embroidery, free motion applique, mixed with blanket stitch applique done with the foot. So the parts that are done where it's done free motion applique are the arms and the nose because the actual arms are narrower than any fabric will ever be. So if you're trying to figure out if you can applique something, keep in mind that the piece that you're actually going to make out of fabric must be big enough to also have a stitch formed on it. Otherwise, you then can incorporate the octi hoops and do free motion over that. This is the tedious part where I have to cut out all these pieces. So I thought I'd give you something to look at. And this is a part of the book. And since I can't seem to find it, or keep forgetting to find it before I go live, this is one of the, just a couple pages of the applique actual process or the technique inside the book. This is an example showing you how my book is designed. It is a workbook. So at the top, you put your machine settings and I tell you how to get your fabric ready and then you make a sample. And the sample is what you see on the right hand side, page 73. And in that lesson, you learn a variety of different shapes and angles and stitch styles. I have a technique called um, applique enhancements. And that's what you see in that circle, that circle <laughs> in the upper left-hand corner of the far right section of that image. And you can see how there's a bunch of stitches going through it. So it makes things look different instead of just the standard satin stitch. And then if you've been challenged to do applique, it's usually because going one direction is easy. And then all of a sudden you have to switch and maybe turn a 130 degree angle or a 90 degree angle. And then the stitch has a left and a right swing of the needle and your brain, depending on what time of day it is or night it is when you're doing it, may be just completely overwhelmed and have absolutely no idea which, which swing to lower the needle in, either the left or the right. And you think you got it great, right, not great, <laughs> unless we want to create a new word. And then you find that you don't and your needle swings way out in open space. Does anybody know the solution? If you lower your needle into the wrong spot, how do you get your needle out of the fabric without stitching and without being a naughty sewer and not following the rules of never turning the hand wheel backwards? You just can't. So it's better to never do it wrong. So no mistakes. How do you never put the needle down in the wrong spot? And it's usually done ahead of time when you're rehearsing. You're getting ready to actually turn the corner and they tell you to lower the needle, turn the handle towards you until the needle swings left and right and then lower the needle in one or the other positions and you lift, you do that. Then you lift the foot, then you turn the fabric, then you lower the foot and then the needle swings out in outer space. So how can you eliminate that? You just don't lower the needle on the corners. And I know that may sound insane, but that's how I do it. And that is how you will do it. 
with the sat nudge foot because you cannot turn a corner with the sat nudge foot with the needle down. 61 degrees, where are you, Susan? That's almost bathing suit weather. You always keep your stabilizer and interface scraps better days. I do as well. I have a bag full. And I can tell which one's which. But the Ziploc bag is always a really good idea. And put the instructions inside. Even better. Know that each one of our stabilizers comes with the instructions. It's part of the label. And we have the images representing the animal. When we have you work with two stabilizers at, in one particular project, which I'm gonna do today, I'm going to use hold light on the bottom. Even though this fabric is, well, is pretty, you know, strong. So it's not likely to pucker. The reason I put hold light on the bottom is because it's slippery. So have you ever slipped on ice? I did, I had a bad year one year. <laughs> I fell three times in like a, a week and a half. And once on black ice in Chicago, going to the International Quilt Festival in Chicago, Illinois. 62 in Paducah. Nice weather for there. See, now I'm like, ooh, I would just love to go out to dinner. Where's that place? So, well, there's so many good restaurants there. You're in Laughlin, Susan. Oh, that's pretty cool for Laughlin. But then it's cold here. Did you have snow this morning as well? Hawa Bibi Patel. Did I pronounce your name right? It's an awesome name. Makes me think of Hawaii. Sorry for making you watch me cut paper out. I'm almost done though. Then we can get to the fun part. So the hold light is like having ice skates or the foot where's the foot let's see the the fabric becomes like slippery ice on the bottom and that's important because what we're going to do is we're going to be applying our fabric to the top i have bags under there i've got batting scraps because that's a whole nother animal Things that are fused to other things bag and then a, just a fabric scraps bag and then the trash. Black ice is terrifying. I fell back, hit my head. That was my arrival to <laughs> right out of the airport, go to the rental car and slipped on black ice. Somehow I managed to survive that. And never hang clothes to dry without putting a towel underneath in a room with a slippery floor. I did that like right when I got back. And then one day my daughter was spraying Pam over a pan. Instead of over the stove, she sprayed it over the floor and the Pam went on the floor and I went through. And so all of those happened within a week. And this is what happens when I have time in between. When we put our pieces down, some pieces are going to go below and other pieces are going to go on top and this is the pretty side the pattern i can add it full size and you guys tape it together so that you know that you're positioned properly on your fabric this this actually i designed this pattern today and so Everything you need to actually make this is already in the school. And it's one of the freebies for everybody, not just the VIPs. There are some things though that only the VIPs get because that's the whole point of having a VIP group. They get special things. I still, I have to cut out my center now. Slide this aside. I know there is a tape for joining your batting pieces together. 
And it is something that you're going to see happen when our new site opens, which is slowed down a little bit because something I have to do. But the uh, these are the kind of things that would be great to, for you to put in the school, in the quilting board and go, you know, carry the tape to fuse the battings together. And then I don't just grab whichever one's out there. I'm going to test them and determine which one's better. Just like I really didn't like the, the wool mat. And uh, I was so excited to carry those. And then I went, you know, I got to test it. So having animal smell, is, I just couldn't do it. So I'm gonna use a Sharpie and transfer this. And since this side and this side are straight lines, instead of trying to guide straight, just use a ruler and put the ruler next to the line. And whenever I use a ruler with my ruler, I mean a marker with a ruler, I use the extra fine markers. Or you can use a pin that's gonna iron away. A lot of patterns require that you place things in a specific order. And so the pattern pieces will have like A, B, C, D on each one. This is a basic, a very beginner applique. So if you're new to it, this is definitely something that you can do, even if you've never done it before. This would be, they're very simple shapes. And only really three different shapes. So by the time you're done making petals, you'll be so good at petals. You'll be looking for patterns with petals. I also have a, a uh, pattern coming out for paper piecing and it's a sunflower. So that will be coming out. There we go. Now when I iron this, that shape that I just drew will disappear. And since I have to iron this to the fabric, and then I usually cut after. I'm going to use a marker. But I didn't get my ruler dirty by doing it this way. So now I can just trace right back over it. And when I'm done ironing this, the pink will have vanished. But the blue will still be there. And this is an alcohol pin. Once it dries, the alcohol has evaporated. Some of this actual shape will end up in the seam allowance because this will ultimately be a pillow. If I get far enough, I'll make a pillow. If not, next week, I'll make the pillow. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Next week, I'm going to show you my technique for constructing pillows using the top from today. And it's a washable pillow. So if you want to have wanted to make pillows, and you're gonna do this pattern, you need to get yourself a 14 inch pillow form. Another great thing to think about are, are there any pillows that have holes in them or got stains on them in your house? Because you can take the covering off and reuse the pillow form inside. Almost ready. 243. You guys aren't very questioning today. I've been throwing things again. So where's my center fabric? Here it is. Sorry for the noise. So just in case it didn't make sense to you, this was a piece of paper and I printed on it. And before you print, if you write with a pencil, not a marker, you don't want anything that will seep through, unless you write a letter that is upside down. But I put an arrow going to the top So before you print, it's plain white paper and you just draw an arrow and then you 
you can do an R, meaning right side. And then you print. And then wherever this is, doesn't matter what direction it's going. When you tape this, you make sure that you enter it. That's the top and that side up again. And then this is taped to it and you will end up printing right over what you already had printed before. But now this is the fusible stabilizer. Does that make sense? If it does, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you, Better Days. It felt good to finish the pattern before. I know I'll probably need this again, but I have a drawer for that now. Nope, nope, we don't want you to turn off yet. Almost. Now it matters. Now I have to know that I have this positioned. This is the, the nervous, the scary part. But if you cut this fabric bigger or significantly bigger and you have big rulers, how many of you got lots of rulers? How many of you have more rulers than you ever thought you'd ever own in your lifetime? I was going to have sound text and I was going to go ding. Who's the winner? Who has the most how many rulers do you have? Can you guys even count how many rulers you have? Are you supposed to have instructions about cutting? I will. As I said in the beginning, the pattern has everything you need in order to do this, and I will be adding to it. So if you printed out the mask pattern and you got it, the minute it uploaded, I changed it several times since so that it's even better now. As people ask questions and I realize I could have done a better job, I've been adding to it. This is the next piece I need to iron. And this is a batik. Now since it's not been uh, ironed, since I folded it, and I'm, I'm pretty much used this or follow the same practice that when they make, after I pre-wash something, I iron it or fold it with the right side out. That way my brain never has to think. Probably not a good idea what I'm doing. I'm laying it over all that, but since I haven't peeled the paper off, we're good to go. Watch out for that steam. Should have it turned off. No steam. And the reason is why? Because it can burn you. Steam will shoot out and kind of get this smaller. It's Christmas wrap. <laughs> I sure do love my batiks, but I know some of you might be getting bored with me doing just about everything with batiks. I'm going to do some high fashion fabrics. We're going to have some fun. We are. It's just starting. Today's pattern is located inside of the group for the show, fabrically speaking. I will be adding it to other areas in the school. Because some things duplicate. So inside of Fabrically Speaking Live, which is inside of the school, it is a group. I'm going to turn this off because I have to cut all these pieces out again. Or no, I don't. I have to peel it. So we want everything to be cool before we peel it off. These are cool. And this is a good time to ask me questions because I'm just going to do, be doing this fiddling. In fact, I'll show a different, a tighter shot of me fiddling so that you can see. So we can take and fold this. Just kind of creasing. And this is the paper. 
you have the ability to print out plain white or the color. So when you go to print, it asks you what pages you want to print inside of Adobe. And you can say print all, or you can say print current picture or current page. And when the, whatever page is up is the page that you will see. So that saves you ink. I like printing the colors because it helps me pick the colors. I can just walk up with the pattern up to my patterns or my fabric piles and try to grab the one that's the most like that. So now I make sure I pay attention. Okay, okay, that's dark and that's lighter color. And if you look at it, it's shiny. It reflects. And that's the adhesive on there. And this is so fine, you won't even be able to detect it because this is our Fuse and Fuse, which is one of the most disappearing like or softest undetectable inside your fabric. When I did the wise owl bag and all the pieces of the owl laying on top of one another, you can't tell there's any stabilizer below it or another layer of fabric. It's super soft, which makes this ideal for applique for quilts, especially baby quilts. There's two petals. You love the batiks as well. I, what is this? I might talk about what's in front of my machine here. You still, you still your son's tools. My son always stole my measuring tapes, especially the ones where you push the button and they retract back inside. He, he absolutely loved those. He ended up being a math major. So it was all worth it. Do you guys see this? I'm gonna let you guess. Guess what that is? Do you have any ideas? It's a pattern that will be coming up. I got my noisy chair. I was thinking about not even having a chair that has wheels. Get rid of the noise altogether. So you went to the school and you cannot find it. Oh, because did I say topics? And depending on what device you're on. So when you're at Create with Claire Rowley, which is my school, on the, when you're looking, depending on what device you're on, if you're on a cell phone, there are these three lines, and those three lines are called the hamburger button. Did you guys know that? My son is a techie. He's like, click on the hamburger button. I'm like, what's a hamburger button? <laughs> And he goes, you know, those three lines that look like a bun and a piece of meat. And that's where all the important links are inside of your website. I'm like, great. I got to teach all my customers about the hamburger button. So if you haven't learned that yet, a lampshade for the dog. It is a doggy cone. I designed that for my dog, Tinkerbell when she had some surgery because she's so little it was it was I just felt terrible with especially she'd go to the doggy door and it would she would hit and she couldn't get through so it still did what it should and and it I got I made one for Chase too he didn't even need it but he wanted to wear one so it's really cute and you can make them into little flowers for Halloween because they don't really mind having it on. They can't get to their body to lick, but it's not confining. So that's coming up. And as usual, there's batting flying around in my sewing room. So let me know, Sarah, if you found, if you found it. So inside of the school, when you go to the groups, the creator groups are located on the left-hand side. And when you go inside there, you'll see Fabrically Speaking Live is one of the groups. And today's episode is in there telling you to, to watch it because we're live right now. Afterward, I'll, I'll change it to thank you for watching. 
And to the left when you're inside of there is topics. And when you click on topics, you'll see there's patterns or a free pattern. You found it? Good. But not at the school. Oh, okay, so under my link at YouTube, you were able to click on it because I had a link to the group in there. I think I'm done with this. Oh my goodness. All, almost to the sewing part. Gotta cut this out. And I haven't cut on the board, so I'm gonna do that because some of you don't know about that. That you don't have to use, you can cut right on top of the light. Did you guys see where I put my ruler? Squeak. <laughs> I'll get better at giving you guys direction. But know this, that inside of the school, in every group and every topic, or in every group, there's a topics. And that's where I'm putting patterns and the supplies that you need. For instance, on the mask, I had those little rings. And I gave you three different types of rings to choose from in there because some people are allergic. Oh, by the way, I was going to show you how there's the lines that were the pink have vanished. And all I'm left with is my not very straight blue line that I drew. But I'm going to use a ruler to cut so it'll be nice and straight like this one is. I'm telling you, this is a great present too. If you know anyone who likes sunflowers, I think, I think you're pretty much safe to give someone a sunflower anything, don't you? Or is it just me? So I don't trust myself going around a curve. So I'm not gonna do it. Use my scissors. Elbows down. As always, elbows down, you have more control. And even your hand down and move the, the fabric instead of lifting your arms, trying to maintain your arms in the air because you become wobbly. And while I love the Appliquick scissors, I would never ruin them on paper. These are my upholstery scissors, which is nearly impossible to ruin. The blades are really thick. All right. Are you guys excited? I'm excited. I got to iron the hold light to the back. Too. And if you have a square ruler, which I do, I thought I had it ready. Where is it? I don't know, you guys. How do we find center on our fabric? Remember, these fabrics are going to be fused. So bias is not an issue. So we can take it and fold our fabric once. And you can see how miserably I cut this. Ay, ay, ay. I'm just going to use the iron. I got iron pieces anyway. Time to warm this back up. When I think of sunflowers, I always think of my daughter. So she used to wear a big full size flower in her hair. And she sings a song, American Honey. She sang it to me and it made me cry. And they talk about sunflowers in there. I'm pretty sure I may be wrong. So this would be a good time to square off the fabric and know that you have an 18 and a half square so that you can have your seam allowance. Don't let that iron cool off. And this would be a good time to have my big 
cutting mat on here with the lines. Which just happens to be handy. I don't even know how I survived before I got one of these. So it has the lines on it. And if you take and you bring your center corner in there and you make sure it's straight here and straight here. Okay, I can move it over a little. So you just have to bring it to a square point and then you swing it up, make sure it's straight here. Make sure it's straight here. And a, what did I say it was 14, right? It's a 14 inch pillow. So seven is, is really where it's designed to be. But you know what I'm gonna do instead of actually cutting it? Cause I may change my mind and do an 18 inch pillow. Can't really do that, can I? Change my mind. I'll do a 16 inch pillow form. Oopsie. Can't see it, there it is. So I'm not cutting. I'm deciding I'm going to cut there, but not I'm not committed. And I want to do the same thing this way. I want to go out eight inches. Because I cut so terribly to start with, I'll be able to tell if I can do this. I'm going to go ahead and cut it because I feel like I'm going to confuse you if I don't. But now I don't have to keep it on the lines. I can just move it like that since I already have a line there. As long as you don't unfold it. And why I do that is because I don't have that way I don't have to move since I'm filming. If this were a quilt, I'd be standing up looking down over the ruler to make sure that I have more accurate cutting. So next week you already know what we're gonna do pillow construction, and I'm going to show you piping as well as the assembly of this pillow. And now we have a perfect square and we can position in a little bit. It's going to be half inch seam allowance. I don't know, but we don't have to position it yet. Just peel the paper off first and I'm going to use the glue. Once I know I have my pieces where I want them, then I, I put a little bit of our glue on it and to secure it. Like, Where is it? Where's my bottle? In my cubby. All right. Oh, I don't know why I brought my presser. This is your chance to really be accurate in your placement of your piece before you iron it and make it permanent. For those of you who don't know, this is our liquid base glue. And some people are lurking and not in the chat. So hello to all of you that are hiding behind the scenes. This is gonna be in the seam allowance. I do wanna make sure that this is in the seam allowance. Before I glue, I'm gonna position all of the petals. And this is a good time to refer to your pattern. So you can kind of see how it should be placed. 
So there is one that comes out from the center if you were to divide this in half. So this is a cheater way if you don't have you don't want to print out the piece. So I just did a little little crease right there. It's not really that important. And we want to have this tucked beneath that piece about a quarter inch. I didn't give you all the markings on this because it's such a simple pattern. Kind of to show you that if you were to look in a coloring book, what you would need to do. If you wanted to just take a coloring book, you would actually take your petal all the way to here and then you would draw a little bit of a line and add a little bit of like a quarter inch overlap. You could make these shapes the shape you see in this actual picture. In other words, instead of the petal being rounded, it would be cut away. So you use less fabric. Then you would have the bottom piece come in a quarter inch and come down. It's a more complex cut and not a lot of fabric is wasted. So this is fine. And now the fabric or the light box is not going to reflect through this fabric. But if this were a lighter material, lighter color, then lighting up the pad, you'd be able to see that all your pieces are under there a quarter inch. But remember, this is not a really important shape. This is uh, a flower, a biggie. Starting to come to life though, isn't it? I love applique. It makes such a huge difference with such little work. It's going to be a pretty pillow, huh? I kind of feel like putting another flower on the other side, but that's, that's my nature. Always overdoing. Do any of you tend to overdo? Have you been accused of an, being an overdoer? If you have, thumbs up, all you overdoers. You just got to make sure that this piece is, is overlapping. It's overlapping more than it needs to. And once you feel like you've got, say, this piece, I'm going to have it be in the seam because that's the way I, did, I drew it anyway. So I'm going to flip this up and put some of our glue on there. And this is water soluble stabilizer in a bottle. So it's not a glue, Sandra. So just a few little dots. And then kind of slide your finger across it and then lay it down. And you have time to adjust it till you get it right where you want it. This is a velveteen type of upholstery fabric. So it's hairy. And it moved after I moved it. But I have time to move it because it's not dry yet. There we go. You can see it holds really well once it is in position. There we go. You're welcome. Hi, Ellen from Pittsburgh. Well, I'm glad that you're enjoying yourself. And uh, I, I never really know if you guys are late. Only you know if you're late. So if we just leave those dots there, it's no big deal in this in this particular case. Now I have the opportunity to go, okay, so that's a quarter inch. Kind of slide it under there just a little bit, like a quarter inch, and then put a dot. If you put a dot in the center of your piece and kind of spread it out a little bit, then you can actually put your finger in the middle and kind of rock it until you get the piece exactly the way you, where you want it to be. And then when we go to iron, it won't move. Nothing worse than it moving afterward because you cannot undo it. Once you use the iron on these pieces, they're, they're there. there. 
And for those of you who have the octi hoops, once you have your pieces here, you can take this underneath the hoop. If you use upholstery fabric like I am, you don't even need batting. And you could draw and create stems and come out and create artistic elements in conjunction with your applique. Does that sound fun? I could have this pillow be four episodes. <laughs> but then I'll never get my quilt done and I'll have people upset with me. I'm really thinking that this coming week I'll be able to finish working on my quilt. Do any of you have your quilt tops ready to quilt a king size quilt along with me? Thumbs up if you do. Isn't it lovely? I'm really liking it. It's going to be nice on my couch. It's one of the things I love about doing this show. Now I'm, I'm happy with the, the placement of the petals, so I'm going to put it on the tips too, so they can't rock. Just a little dot. Just a little dot will do you. I like this mixing different types of materials together. It's kind of like a mixed media type of sewing. And now the little petals. One, two, three, four. And those also need to be tucked under this piece. My design wall is rolled up. I need to hang it from the ceiling. And I've been taking pictures of the design wall construction so that you guys can make one. But if you wanna be like ahead of, ahead of schedule, I use the roll up blinds that you buy. They're solid and vinyl and they have like a plastic on the bottom that you can pull on and it and then it retracts up and I got one the biggest one I could get was 78 inches can only handle so big any anyway in this room I won't be able to put an entire king size quilt behind me but I can put half of one Isn't this exciting, you guys? <laughs> I don't feel like I work at all when I work on the show. Just so you know. If you guys are feeling like somebody was like, I feel bad. You're doing too much for us. I could not believe the call I got. She's like, you need to, it was last Friday. She goes, you need to take time for yourself. You're doing too much for us. <laughs> You're almost ready to put your blocks together? Cool, Donna. So see, this is, there's no reason not to do this, to make sure things aren't gonna slip. And then know that the paper that you removed is ironable. So if you don't have a Teflon sheet, where'd that big piece go? Oh, there it is. You can lay it down over it and use that as a pressing cloth because it has the wax side and it's designed to be ironed on. And this is a time when you press, don't iron, and no steam. And I'm counting, kind of, not really. <laughs> if I were counting, how long would I have done that for? So know this, cotton burns at 250 degrees. You're at a cotton setting. If you're going to leave this down too long, then you can start to burn the fabric where there is no pressing cloth. So lifting and moving, definitely pressing this time, not ironing. Pressing is lifting and moving. Ironing is moving the iron along the surface. So if you have a Teflon pressing sheet, you can lay it on there. I have several, no idea where they are right now. It's nice to know that when you buy our Fuse and Fuse, you're actually getting pressing fabrics as well. Don't, ah, don't iron on your mat. That's what the glass is for. Ah. 
See, I was worried about me doing something that has not been habitual for me. My mat could be warped. Bummer. Oh, well. It's a good thing they're not very much. And for those of you who don't know, their products are really affordable. For caterpillar glass you can iron on. And then you don't have any, you're not at risk of warping the board beneath. <sighs> so upsetting. We'll see if it, if it damaged it or not. Yesterday, or last week, I wrote on it. I'm in rare form. Then you flip it over. And I'm going to use steam on the back and push steam through using my ironing pad. I always have bottles of water ready for my iron. And if your iron says no salt, it means no salt. In fact, it's very rare for an iron to need steam anymore. Technology has grown. Sorry for these loud noises, you guys. You guys are so quiet. All right, push steam through. Hi, Eve from California. Which part of California? Now I can iron because I'm on the back on this fabric. The way it's designed, it really is not stretchy. So, Sarah, you have your knee in a cast right now, huh? And then you can run your finger along. See that this point is not down. This is a velvet. It's not really, but it kind of feels like it. And I think it's risky to iron on velvet. Now I don't want steam. I don't want to get burned. Boy, that turns off really good, the steam. Make sure all your points are really secure. And all your edges. This is your chance to make sure everything's ironed down. And know this, once our stuff's ironed down, it stays down. Other brands will lift up on you. Can, anyway. No more ironing. Return it. Time to sew. I ordered everything I need in order to switch my close-up camera. So, for those of you who are concerned that I'm not sitting where I should be, that's going to change next week because the stuff's actually arriving today. And I have two monitors, so I'll be able to share you my monitor in the future and actually go to into the school and show you instead of describing. I love my cubbies. I should write on it which episode it was. Okay, I'm trying to move this out of the way. Remember, we're always sewing with our elbows down. So make sure your mat isn't, your elbow isn't going to be on the edge of your mat or anything else on your table. So any of you in the VIP group, I added a pattern in there. The butterfly that I did last week. You guys got the, the one I hand drew. I went in and drew it digitally. When I do applique, I like to use the lingerie thread in the bobbin. And the lingerie thread is what I used last week on embroidery. I'm so glad that my show is helping you through your... Ah, I need to put a whole light on the back. Okay, wait. Do any of you remember what setting you're supposed to use with the hold light? I'm not searching for things this week. It's going to get better every week. I'm going to get more organized.
How do you get to the group? I have a keyboard. I can type it again. Unless one of you has enough experience where you can copy and paste the school's address. It is pinned to the top of the chat, but when the chat gets long, it gets harder to see it. And it is also, after this is over, if you're watching this after and we're no longer live, it's pinned to the top. It's also inside of the description below the video. And that's where I'm kind of showing you where it would be. So right now we're live and when we're live. If you're seeing the chat, you can click this little arrow down and then the chat will be hidden. And then you can go into the description. It says hide chat, view chat or something like that. Afterward, you can get yourself back here to the live chat unless we're not live anymore. And today is March 11th, 2021. And this is season two, episode 10 of Fabrically Speaking Live. Now, what I want is I want the hold light to be on the back of the overall piece. And what this does, especially if this fabric is the same type, you decide you're going to use all, all cottons, it's really important that you support the main body. And this is what I call the main body, the full piece, the square. You want to have the main body supported with the stabilizer on the backside to stop it from puckering or getting wrinkles around the the pieces that are fused because the pieces that are fused are stabilized and this isn't it's just laying there it's going i'm gonna get puckered give me something to support me and this is the best one it's the same one we use to stop t-shirts from stretching when doing embroidery so if you remember me talking about it last week it's the same one but now we're going to use it as a backing for applique shiny side to the iron and you need a piece bigger than your applique piece. In this case, you don't need to do the entire 16 inch square. I noticed you joined the VIP, Donna. Thank you for joining. I can't wait to see you guys embroider those butterflies. I expect you guys to do these things, by the way, you know, not just watch me work. Are you guys feeling like you're understanding how the school is set up better now? Yeah, you can't copy and paste with a phone, can you? Well, you can. It can be tricky sometimes, though. You put your finger down on a link and you hold it instead of tapping, and sometimes it'll let you copy it. But one time I had my, luckily I, I hadn't gone live live yet, and I slid my finger on the keyboard and it shut down the entire feed, all the cameras. Next week when I have another monitor, I'll be able to share my screen better. But I will do this in a second. I will copy and paste the link to the school as soon as I'm unfolding this. As long as you guys don't mind. 323, actually a lucky number. I mean, my daughter, my daughter share. I'm going to iron, you know why? Because at the end of the video, I will have it. And I have to leave here at five. That means I have to shut down a little before five my time. And I haven't sewn yet. I always think I can get more done than I can. Synthetic is the setting for this. You don't want it to be hotter. And it's really good because like this is a velveteen material. It should not be experiencing extremely high heats because the, the little hairs end up getting melted. You think my sewing machine is clean? Is that another word for cool or? I don't know. You might be talking to somebody else. I'm eavesdropping on you guys. 
Oh, I'm not on the right setting. I wonder. <laughs> Too cool. But that's one of the really neat things about this product is that you don't have to use a high heat on it. I thought I shut the steam off. This is definitely a stabilizer you don't want steam with because it's 100% like waterproof. And so the steam will shoot out and burn your fingers. And you'll know when it's ironed because it changes completely in its appearance once it's ironed down. You want to make sure it's held down well. Not just a little bit here, a little bit there. 100% of it is ironed down because you can end up peeling up the side and then it peels off because it is not fusing permanently to the fabric. It's a temporary. Okay, so, so it's a mouthful. It's a temporary iron-on permanent stabilizer. How can it be both? Because it stays permanently within the stitch, but then you're able to tear off the rest. So it temporarily stabilizes your fabric and permanently stays in and below the stitch. I love this machine. I'm probably going to use it for a while. And I have it so I can move it now. It's not stuck to the table. I was busy making things better this week. Okay, it's time to sew. Yay! Not bad. Design a pattern. Create it. Make it available to you. Let you all know that I went live to this time because last week I didn't let you know, I don't think. I still didn't get a newsletter out, but that's why you should join the school because the school people get notified. Now, the order that you sew is from bottom to top. So when you're looking at your embroidery or your applique, which piece is below all the rest and that is the one you want to start with this will be the final piece that'll go over and we're going to go ahead and start right where these two fabrics join together and the stitch we're going to use i'm going to um, show you the settings for this we're going to use a foot first so i'll do that first and this is the satin edge foot. It comes with instructions on satin stitch edges on applique. So in the booklet, you would set up the foot according to the applique instructions. And I've designed this booklet and all of my instructions to prevent you from messing up if you have a computerized machine. So these are the machine settings, pressure for pressure normal, which which is not necessarily what you'll end up with. Sometimes you'll want pressure foot pressure normal, and sometimes you'll want it a little softer, depending on how much you turn. So, and uh, the settings, let's see, let me put the foot on. This machine has a snap-on, or is designed as a snap-on foot machine. So I'm putting my machine snap-on adapter back on, and then screw it tight. When you look at this foot, you'll see that it has a wire located inside of the zigzag opening. The light's a little harsh. I don't even have my other lights on. Not sure which light is doing that. But this nut, when you turn it, it changes the location of that wire inside the zigzag opening. That is connected to this white guide. And we're going to be moving that after we decide what width of stitch we want to use. You can use a wider stitch when your fabric is thick like this. OK, 
Getting ready to use the cell phone here. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. We're gonna use a regular zigzag stitch. And it depends on your machine as to which one is normal. The difference between this one and this one is this one ties a knot at the beginning. So I don't really like that. I prefer to think for myself. So a zigzag stitch. And then because my fabric's relatively thick, I'm gonna go, I don't wanna go too thick though. And the reason I don't is because these little paddle, that's a really kind of a small piece. So I think I'm gonna max out at four on the width. I'm not gonna go any wider than that, even though the foot would allow it. And the stitch length, I start at a 0 0.8 and I can move down as I sew until I get it to look the way I want it to. And know that you could have a piece ready, another little sample piece to practice on before you actually do it on your actual project. It's not a bad habit to get into to do that. Always practice using the exact same thread that you're going to use, fabric that you're going to use, and make sure everything is prepared the right way. And that way you're actually get rehearsing what you're going to experience instead of thinking that it's going to be the way that you want it to be. So I need to switch now to, I have three different colors of thread. And the thread that I recommend for this would be the Polyfast 100% polyester 40 weight thread that you'll find at creativefeet.com. And you'll also find links for it in the description below the video. If you have embroidery thread already, you can go ahead and use what you have. But I wouldn't recommend you use our 80 weight or 100 weight thread for this because you won't see the stitch very much. And I can't give you an exact stitch length because the, the fabric and the thread and the setting of the pressure, they're all variants that, that, that affect the number or the stitch length. All right, so I need to put the darker color on first of the two yellow-ish colors. And you could just use one color thread if you like, it really is up to you. Whenever changing the thread on your machine, make sure you raise the presser foot. If you don't, your tension discs don't open. And if you go and change your color thread, you'll end up with bird's nest or looping on the bottom of your fabric. The proper needle to use for this would be dependent on the fabric you're appliquing onto. Now this is upholstery fabric, but it isn't pasted. So on the back side of the material, this is how you determine what kind of needle to use for upholstery. So you can see I didn't iron all the way to the end and the whole light's starting to peel off. But this is a woven, you can see, you can see the weave. And if you scrape it with your fingernail, no paste falls off. If the upholstery fabric has a paste, then you need to use an upholstery needle or leather needle. Woven fabric will outlast the other because it is uh, woven and allowing you to actually use a needle that doesn't damage the fibers. So if you use a sharp needle, it cuts right through the fibers. A sharp needle would be including a sharp needle, a denim needle, a microtex needle, and the upholstery or leather needle. They all cut fibers. And that's why you'll see usually a felled seam or a double seam on items made using those types of fabrics because they use a needle that really destroys the fabric. And sometimes we actually put a glue or a rubber and seal the stitches. If in the case of sewing for marine or like boats so that the water doesn't get in where the needle went. All these little things you may not be aware of in manufacturing. So I'm using a 9014 
universal needle. And that's fine for this fabric. It's relatively thick. And the thread that I'm using is 40 weight. I'm gonna make this cool illustration so that you guys see how needles work and so that you it'll stick in your head a little bit better. But along the front face of the needle is a long groove going down the front of it. And your thread has to be able to hide in there. If it can't hide in there when the thread or when the needle goes through the material, then it's being, the fabric is rubbing against the thread and it pushes the thread up against the back of the needle where the hook comes and forms the stitch. And it causes shredding of the thread above the eye of the needle. So when I talk about needles and tell you which one to use, I'm, I'm doing so for your best interest. I dropped my glasses. I'm going to retrieve them and then begin sewing. <laughs> my puppy is so comfy. It's kind of a pretty shot, isn't it? I feel like taking pictures. Clear your area. I have a whole bunch of stuff in front of my machine. So I'm moving it away so that I don't get distracted by it and it doesn't fall on the floor. Those scissors almost got put away. And they're the scissors I'm gonna be using for this. So I have to pick them up. Once again, you always wanna be centered with your sewing machine needle, and I'm not, so that you guys can see me sewing. Took a little sip of water. Now, as I go around this, I'm gonna have to so up here, come back down, and then hop. So is it easier for me to start this way? Or is it easier for me to start over here? And that's the decision that you make before you begin. And for my brain, I like to use this side of the guide, but know that both sides of the guide are identical. So you can use both. In the setting for this, we've chosen the width. And you turn the hand well until the needle comes down in the right swing of the zigzag stitch. I think I should show you with this. Okay. The future is bright. I can't wait. So Let's see, this light should be on. Are you guys having a good time? Anyone have any questions? I'm gonna peek at your chat and see if any of you do have any questions. There, now you can see better. So turning the hand wheel you want to make sure that the needle is touching the right side or, or that the wire is touching the left side of the needle. And the needle needs to be down when you do this. Now, I don't want my needle to stitch there. So I'm going to bring my needle back up. And the rule is always turn the hand well towards you. But I did not sew yet. So I'm going to back it up, but while I do that, I'm holding this thread and gently just a little bit up. And move it over. And the wire is just off the edge of the fabric. Make sure that you see how the needle is deflecting? Because I actually bent the needle while adjusting the guide because I can't see from my perspective. If you know anyone who has vision issues, once the foot is set, 
then they don't have they don't turn the nut they can go ahead and do this type of work i want to bring it back so that i'm starting right on the edge of this fabric here And if you don't have a knot stitch, leave your thread long, and then you can put it through a hand needle and bring it to the bottom. Since I do have a knot stitch, I am actually gonna bring my bobbin thread up as well, so that it doesn't, I don't have a tail back there. You bring the thread up, then you just go like this, and slide the thread underneath and it picks up your bobbin thread. Except for my bobbin thread is really short. Come on. Why did I do that? Because sometimes your thread will skip. You, you won't even get a stitch. And you'll wonder why. And it's just because your bobbin thread was too short. So what do you think? Is this an improvement, you guys? Still deflecting just slightly. So I'm gonna move it back a little bit. And pull it back. If you don't have a knot stitch, you can sew a couple stitches. I have boots on. I don't sew, I don't like sewing with boots on. I feel like it's someone else's machine when I do. So you sew a couple, a few stitches, and then lift up and bring it back again. And what I'm trying to determine now is what is the stitch length? And I'm doing so with my hands off of the fabric. If I hold it, I'm gonna cradle it. Just gently put my hands beneath it, but not ever like this. When you're setting the stitch length, you want to know what the machine is doing. You don't want to help it because then you're affecting the stitch length. And that'll end up, you'll end up with pile ups and spread outs. If you've ever had that happen, hit a thumbs up. Now you know why. It's because you set the stitch length with your hands on the fabric to begin with. And I don't know if this will sew with the foot here. I'm going to give it a go. Let's see. Although I am completely blocked by the cell phone, which means I am using the cell phone to look through. And my brain is upset about it, but I think I can get through it. So I was touching. I just shortened it to 0 0.5, but it's very, very light touch, by the way. I'm not pushing, let it do it. Okay, that's so six. I didn't clean my table good enough. Would you look at that? So my eye is focused on here. Just keep bringing the fabric back to the guide. Try never to have space between those two. It's very unnerving in the beginning. You will want so badly to look at that needle and uh oh my goodness if you have trouble seeing you might really if you can get the hang of getting your phone to sit there which i'll uh give you a link for the tripod that i'm using right now because you can set it up in front of your machine and and magnify your sewing machine foot and needle area when you're not going live like i am because i could have zoomed in normally so actually this is smaller than what, you, than what you're seeing. Because I'm looking through my little cell phone. I'm looking at the big, I can't do that. I can't look at the big, the big uh, monitor. It's too far away. My, my mind is not happy about that. Now we're call, coming all the way up. And now I'm lifting the foot, planting my fingers so that the fabric can't move away from me. 
and I'm going to push off the wire and see how the foot released the actual fabric. And then we're going to come all the way around for going back the other way. And this cell phone is not going to be able to stay there, I don't think. Because it's a lot of fabric that I'm spinning around. And this tripod has to have somewhere to sit. And then we're going to lower the foot so that the wire is off that edge and so that the needle is going to come down where we left off. This camera position is not very good, is it? This is so cool. I'm a little nauseous though, because I'm looking somewhere other than where I'm really at. Not bad, because I can barely see it. Now this fabric, or this stitch, I have to go up and over it with the foot. And we're on any machine using any foot. The, the foot is tipped and the feed dogs are only engaged on that side it's because of the, the way it tips. And that means you have to lengthen your stitch length for a little bit. So I'm taking it all back to 0 0.8 and sew a little bit. And I'm kind of having to lift it because it's stuck on the tripod. Oh, go shorten it back down now. Once it starts to feed, I'm going to seven because I was tempted to push it, which means I'm not ready yet to let the machine take over. Now we go back to six, 0 0.6 to be accurate. And uh, I know you guys are probably watching the needle, but this is where my eye is focused, making sure there's no space there. Isn't that a beautiful stitch? Nice and easy to see for you guys. <laughs> I am like, oh my goodness. I'm going to show you this perspective. That's what's going on really behind the scenes. I'm looking through this little window right here. <laughs> so you guys can see that. So this is in essence what we're going to keep doing. Repeat. Do one petal after the other after the other. By the time you're done, you're going to be so proficient at sewing petals. Then you'll be brave and ready to try another. And this is where I would sew. I switched to my left needle position straight stitch. And I'm sewing a couple stitches. Actually going to reverse. But I don't want to go into that pedal too much. Ah, this, this machine. Something wrong with this machine's reverse. I wanted to keep it on this pedal where I'm going to be stitching. So now I have a knot. And just as I teach you on quilting and embroidery, don't cut your bobbin thread. Only cut your needle thread. because we brought our bobbin thread up already, so we don't need to bring it up again. And I'm gonna go over to this pedal and flip it around. Always going in that same direction. Starting on the right-hand side of the pedal, coming up, and then flip over and go back down. It's kind of like rinse and repeat. <laughs> Feel free to ask questions right now. I will look up and look at the chat. Oh, I was trying to bring the bobbin thread up. <laughs> hey, 
habits. Did I actually pull it up a little? No. I'm hopping over now to this one. Welcome to Fabrically Speaking Live, where I go live. Aren't I brave? No editing. I changed my stitch back to the zigzag stitch, four millimeter wide, 0 0.8 to start. Ah, nauseous again. I didn't move the guide, so we should be okay. Keeping your eye right there, not there. No matter how tempting, that's that is where the needle is, is now is is the past. It's already happened. This is the future up here. This is the future. That's now. So you always want to look where you're at, not where you're going. I mean, <laughs> look where you're going, not where you're at. I oops, shorten the stitch length to six. So I can hop back a little bit, depending on how really good you want everything to look. I can't see. If this camera were bigger, I'd be fine, but it's so little. Itsy bitsy little foot. <laughs> zoom, zoom. Ah, the camera tripod has made it so I couldn't move my fabric. But see how I saw before I got there? So I didn't mess up. If I were looking at the needle, it would have been too late. Go to the point, stop with the needle up, plant your finger, slide off the wire, and then spin it around, keeping your finger planted. And that's, a, that's how you don't get a bunch of thread or slack on the needle. But what if it, what, what if it happened? What if you got the slack hanging there? Come on, camera, get in focus. There we go. What do you do? Oh, no. You just take the thread and pull it back toward the spool. Problem solved. What you're hearing is the whole light beneath the fabric, just a stabilizer keeping this fabric from getting puckers. Come up. This is the satin edge foot, also known as the magic foot. And it has a guide that I positioned for this stitch width. And it adjusts mm -hmm. to different widths. And it fits all machines. All you need is a zigzag stitch if you're coming in late. Hi, Sheila Dusty. Mm -hmm. So that is, I answered before I saw you. And it is the satin edge foot that you're seeing, which is pretty much all you can see right now. <laughs> now that you can watch this again, after I'm done being live. So the foot can get stuck, any foot, as I said, can get stuck on that satin stitch. So we increase our stitch length instead of pushing or pulling the fabric through. And the machine is actually then pulling the fabric through for you. So until you see it starting to advance without holding on. So my fingers are lifted off the fabric. And then I just shorten it back down. So you can do this with a satin stitch foot, but you're having to, to see too much. So what I'm looking at, at here is this guide right here, not the needle back here. So if you've ever done applique before, you know that your eyes are usually focused on that needle swinging. And you can't focus on something that moves that fast in case you didn't notice. Your eyes get blurry and you miss because your eyes are distracted. You're looking where you are instead of where you're headed. So I just keep bringing the fabric back to the guide. This is my satin edge foot and I designed it for a woman who was born blind and deaf so that she could do things a surgeon could do. This machine has a knot stitch. I'm going to use it. And now I'm going to hop over, spin my fabric around. This is my satin edge foot. 
and you're watching a Creative Feet show called Fabrically Speaking Live. And I'm the inventor of the Creative Feet. Feet like the feet that go on your sewing machine. This is our most popular product because it does the guiding for you. Once again, I'm gonna do a knot. And why don't I have to lower my needle? Because the foot represents where the needle will be. So it stops you from having to think about that. But I can see there's a big gap from where the edge of that petal is. So I need to pull it back. Go a little bit back. I don't want any gaps. And use a different color thread on those little petals though. So we can cheat a little, but not a lot. Ignore the sewing machine needle. Watch the front of the foot. Increase your stitch length always at the beginning. Because it's writing over what's over here, too. And I hadn't, so it struggled there for a few stitches. 0 0.8 is what I was starting at. And that really is determined by your fabric. This is a velvet upholstery fabric. And I'm sewing, looking through a tiny little screen. So I think I'm getting, I got stuck there. Well, you get to see me mess up every sh every week. And that's probably, I think that was the bobbin thread, by the way, you guys. That carryover stitch. Which is a bummer. Six. 0 0.6 is the length for the majority of this. Ignore everything else. Watch the front of the foot. I have to remind myself, by the way. I don't know if this is too much for this camera being that close. Or if it's just that it's wireless. And it's starting to struggle. Do you guys have any questions for me? So no new questions. Are you guys still there? Hello, hello. I'm trying to give this cell phone a break, see if it'll pick back up again. Cause that's really the best way for you guys to see this. However, I think I've done enough that close and I can do this quicker if I'm not staring through that little screen. You should be centered with your sewing machine foot and elbows down on your on your table and or resting your arm on, on your machine. If you wanna cradle the fabric, you can cradle it, but you don't wanna have your hands down on top. This is my go-to position for applique. And now it's big instead of a itty, itty bitty little foot. Come up to the point, stop with the needle up, lift, pull off the wire, turn. Now you can see it's much quicker. Increase stitch length. Anytime you feel the need to push, just think I'm not in labor. I'm not supposed to push when I sew. Increase stitch length instead, then decrease it once it starts to feed. And this is how you get a consistent stitch length on applique because I am not pushing or pulling the fabric through. I'm just making sure that the fabric doesn't get stuck on anything. What's your comment, better days? So until we reach the smaller petal again and then tie a knot, because the needle thread needs a knot. Lift, push off the pin, turn, lower the foot. Make sure the wire is off the edge. Oh, I got the wrong camera. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'll switch to this one. What's your comment? Amy, what's your comment? You said you have a comment. Is there a comment I missed? 
Let me scroll up. I don't see it. What was it that you could have purchased earlier? I'm so sorry that I didn't. Honestly, I'm trying to have your patterns first. I don't know what it is that you wanted to purchase. You can say. And I don't know better days way. Oh, after you sewed with your eyes closed and this foot continued sewing a beautiful straight stitch. Isn't it neat? I did challenge everybody to sew with your eyes closed. So Amy did. How about any of the rest of you? Did you do it? This is not very pretty. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I'm using my knot stitch, which is a button on my machine. And it sews a few stitches in place. You can achieve that by just using a shorter stitch length on a straight stitch and then switching back to zigzag. But that requires changing your machine settings. It did not go close enough to the pedal. I need to put my glasses on. This is what will bug you is if you if you end up with a gap between the pedals. It'll be a hard fix later. Better to go a little bit up on that little one because there's it's going to be a stitch over that than to have it be a space between these two pedals. Once again, increase stitch length on the on the inside and outside corners because the foot is resting on the stitch that you sewed over here. You just can't see it. It's back there. So it's having a little bit of trouble. And so increasing the stitch length gives it help without you being the one increasing the stitch length because we are not a sewing machine. We are not feed dogs. We need to let the feed dogs do their thing. Your job is to make sure that the fabric is not hindered, that you're cradling it and supporting, being there in case your scissors get stuck on it or anything else. A cat comes up, your dog wants to lay on it. I don't know. I don't know what your sewing experiences are. Do any of you sew with a cat on your table? I've seen a lot of big pictures of cats on the table. Reach the corner, plant my finger, raise the foot, push gently off the wire. Now I'm free to turn. Keep my finger planted and I spin it around. Lower the foot. The wire is off the edge, so is the sewing machine needle. Got a little bit of slack there. So I just pull it back towards the spool above the tension. And then increase stitch length. So a few stitches till it starts to feed without my help. Shortening it down, down to seven. And now it's feeding, and now I go to six. So it's a gradual drop down. Keeping my eye here, making sure there's no space, but also making sure I also don't ride up on it. It's actually hard to get up over the edge. This foot is super sensitive, even though it has no senses. People actually usually use descriptions like that they say how does it know well it doesn't know anything it has no it has no brain <laughs> how does it sense the edge it doesn't sense anything it has no senses it's just a foot i designed for someone who was born blind sorry for getting my arm in the way lift plant my finger spin around hop over what time is it i'm gonna finish this you guys Zoom, zoom. I don't want to let anyone down and not have their shipment get out. Unless the driver picks it up. But I have a feeling they're not certain to increasing my stitch length. Sorry. So a few stitches, then shorten it down. Keeping your eye on the spot right there cradling the fabric, not pushing down on it. 
So if you've ever watched someone applique and their hands were like this, what they're doing is they're affecting the feed dog consistency and straining their hands as well as distorting the fabric. So we want to let the sewing machine do its job. It's 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 got it's got really good feed dogs. Let the machine do the work. You can go out and work out later. Let the machine work out now. Your cat likes to sit with you, Susie or Susan. Reach the point. Stop with the needle. Always up. Thumbs up, everybody. I'm going to love this pillow. So next week, I'm going to be showing you guys how to construct the pillow with piping. I'm going to do complimentary piping, probably yellow. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe I'll do a multiple piping. Maybe three rows of piping. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, I'm so sorry, Ellen. Okay. Here we go. Increase our stitch length. So a few stitches, and that time I went over where I already was. And I have my length at 0 0.8. It's starting to feed, I shorten it back down. Keep your eye focused there. Now it's likely to fall off right here. So I'm preparing myself for that. And that's why you see my fingers here. I'm in, in case. This is my in case I'm needed position. It's a very light touch on the fabric. I'm, I'm only there if needed. Trying not to look at that. Look here instead. And this is all going to get caught in the seam allowance. But we still don't want to fall off and cause a pucker like what you see is going on there. So we lift and put it back down. Lift, oops, bring that down. Yay, that's the majority of the work. So knot stitch, which is a few stitches in place. And now I'm gonna do the little petals. And I can, I could go here and go round, round, and then come around, round, or I can stop right now cut my thread, both needle and bobbin this time. And even though I have a scissors on my machine, I cut my bobbin thread long because frequently it will not actually catch. And I'll, if you've ever f couldn't figure out why your thread wouldn't come up, it's generally because the bobbin thread was cut too short. So if we have tails on the top or carryover stitches, that's what these are, on the top we have also have them on the bottom and we need to cut them on the bottom as well i should have ironed it all the way on there i'm gonna do that because it's so noisy it's probably just that this is it's this fabric it doesn't like this it's not staying ironed what am i doing this one. So the stabilizer did not stay ironed to the upholstery fabric. And I've never done it before. It, it has never come apart normally when applicating. So I'm just going to take it off. It'll be quieter. And this fabric is so thick, it really didn't need any help anyway. So we'll see if I regret doing this. I, I'm tired of the noise. This microphone's too good. There we go. So now you can see how clean it tears away. I'm going to get rid of these carryover stitches. So when I had trouble on this one, that carryover stitch got stuck on maybe the feed dogs. And that's what caused it to not feed in that one corner. And for those of you who are watching and coming in now, know that you can rewatch. This will be live on YouTube immediately following and on our Facebook page, wherever you're watching it from now.
All righty. Now I'm going to switch colors of thread because I chose to do that before I started. It's got a different sound to it. Okay. Hugs, Ellen. How many of you have made a pillow before? Give me a thumbs up. And if you did, did you make it so you could wash the pillow cover? If you did, did you put a zipper in or did you do a pocket pillow? And if you did a pocket pillow, did you use Velcro or no? That's a lot to write. Start writing. Time for homework. Share. I'm switching to my lighter color of thread. Bye, Donna. It was nice having you here today. Third Saturday of March. I'm going to be putting a calendar inside of the inside of the school for the VIPs, so you know what day we go live. But uh, third Thursday, or no, it's not. <laughs> third Saturday is coming up soon, so you guys need to come get your questions and you know challenge me because for the VIP group, we go I go live, and I'm at the sewing machine. And it's whatever you want Claire to sew Saturday. So they challenge me with some things. And literally, whatever they want me to sew. I, obviously, I can't sew a king size quilt in an hour. But if you've ever been challenged with anything, that's what those live sessions are all about. So you've made large floor pillows. And you put zippers, that would be wise for that for sure. So these are things you need to think about if you're a new sewer. When you make a pillow, are you gonna throw the whole pillow in the washing machine if it gets dirty? And if you've ever done that, you know that pillows get lumpy and it's really hard to smooth them back out again. You might be intimidated by a zipper. I could do an invisible zipper next week. Tell me what you want. I do pocket pillows frequently. It takes more fabric to do that, but you don't have to unzip a zipper. When you wanna wash it, you just pull your pillow out and it's a lot better than the ones that you, if you buy ready-made pillow shams for your bed, for instance, and it gets all sloppy. I have a, a really nice way of doing it. You can even close it with a button. Very pretty. I could do that too. What do you guys want? You're forming next week's show. So now I'm going to sew my next color and change cameras for you. Using my knot stitch. Making sure that I'm up against the circle or the uh, middle of the sunflower. Do the knot stitch. Watch the front of the foot. Should have brought my bottom thread up. It would have been nice to do a smaller width. Too late. Watch the front of the foot, ignore everything else. My elbows are resting. I'm just using little finger movements, just helping the fabric move. Keeping my eye focused right there. Now I'm coming up where there's a stitch. And that's like a little alert goes off. I may need to increase my stitch length when it goes over those. It's not seeming to hesitate. Looks good. Reach the point. Stop with the needle up. Lift. Push off the wire. Plant your finger and turn. And now's my chance to grab that bobbin thread that I didn't pull up. And cut it short. These are the little apple quick scissors that we offer at creativefeet.com. On the points, we do what? 
increase our stitch length just a little bit. So it was normal at 0 0.6, go to 0 0.8, so it can get over that thickness of thread and the thickness of this petal, because that is right underneath there. So the foot's got, is, is in essence having to climb over the mountain. So we increase the stitch length to 0 0.8 until it gets over those areas. And that's just a real slight change in, in length. And now I'm shortening it back down so that it doesn't spread out after it goes down the mountain. Keep your eye focused on the front of the foot. I wasn't. I messed up. Darn it. It's going to be in my living room. <sighs> Bummer. But you guys have to see me make some mistakes so that you don't make them. Now tie knot. And this time I'm going to be cutting because it's too far to, to go each time. It'll have really big tails underneath. And each time it's a risk of you getting stuck on something. So I'm cutting my bobbin thread. And I don't use the scissors because it cut it too short. Yes, it's a good time to change your bedding coming up on spring. You want me to do the pocket? So a few stitches with the knot stitch. Such a romantic feeling camera. But for those of you who came up and didn't get to see close up, I'm gonna do a little bit like I did before. If the camera can handle it. No, it seems to be struggling. It did fine before. That's kind of blurry, isn't it? It's not helpful if you can't see because the camera is overwhelmed. And it's not catching up with us. So you'll have to watch it on the rewind because the camera was doing really good earlier at a, at a really close angle. I'm not trying to keep it far from you. Watch the front of the foot, watch the guide, not the needle. Just keep bringing it around. Don't push down on the fabric. Elbows are resting so that you don't get sore between your shoulder blades. Keeping your eye ahead of where you're going, not where you're at. Stop with the needle up, lift, pull off the wire. This is why you cannot lower your needle because there's a wire that we have to pull the fabric and disconnect the foot from the fabric. I have another foot here I can show you what I'm talking about. For those of you who walked up after, sorry, it's so noisy. This is the foot and there's this little wire inside the opening. And that wire is sitting off the edge of the applique. And it is making it so I don't have to watch. So as I come around this, this one here, this circle, it's gonna be so easy, zoom all the way down. And all I have to do is keep looking right here, making sure the fabric touches. And the wire is off the edge. And it they're in line with one another. So that's what makes this so much better than any other foot for applique. And you can use it for 27 different things, not just applique. Increasing our stitch length just a little bit. Ignore the sewing machine needle. Watch the front of the foot. My stitch length is at 0 0.8. And that has to do with my fabric and thread and foot pressure. Get over the bump. Once you're over the bump, then you shorten it back down. No pushing down. Suit, oh, zipper insertion, all in one video. That's the Creative Feed extension. It's going to be like that. The Creative Feed extension is going to be 
in that kind of format, kind of like the Creative Feet technical guide and workbook and video are. Whereas the show is going to be more project based like I'm doing now. So if you want to have every way of putting a zipper in, in one area, and then you can sort through like a table of contents and have the uses for each type, all done using the Creative Feet products. That's what the Creative Feet Extensive is. And it's going to open this summer. It hasn't opened yet because I'm going to be using this camera setup and we've been trying to figure out exactly how to do this. If I don't have to edit my videos and going live it does eliminate editing, then I can create more content with less work and give you more for less money. Because the Creative Extensive is a pay for class. Hi, Tink. You want to come up here? Hi, baby. My dog is reminding me to look at the clock. Got a half hour, and then I have to go. I think I'll be done before that. Okay, so I tied a knot again, and I'm going to go ahead. If you don't have the ability to tie knots, you can leave long tails and bring them in through a hand sewing needle and bring them to the bottom and tie a knot. Keep going around. Ignore the sewing machine needle. I'm at a six, and now I'm coming up on this thickness, so I'm going to go up to a 0 0.7. Helping the foot get over those stitches, but not too much because we don't want spaces. Reach the point, stop with the needle always up, lift, pull off the wire, turn, place the guide so it sits off the edge, increase stitch length again, back to 0 0.8. So a few stitches and the fabric just takes it. By the way, my elbows have been resting the entire time. As you see right here, this is the position that I'm in. Just kind of resting, like almost laying around. <laughs> Touch my button, watch my guide, resting the body, loose fingers, not, have, not having sore hands from pushing down, making sure that the fabric doesn't get stuck on the things surrounding my sewing machine. And then just sew. Watching the front of the foot, ignoring the sewing machine needle. This is the kind of stuff that people would see me do at a show. I'd be applicating and like I'm doing now, looking at you. And after a while, you'll start feeling the fabric hit the guide and you might actually catch yourself doing applique and looking around the room while you're doing it. It's very unnerving the first time you do that. Hola, buenas from Costa Rica. <laughs> Beautiful place. I don't, I don't know Spanish. I would like to learn it. Tie a knot. Last little pedal, and then we're going around the, the big part, and this video will be over. Yay. I mean, I love hanging out with you guys, but I have to get to the UPS today. So I can't hang out with you for six hours. If you want to see all of the creative feet, two weeks back I did... I did a pop-up show and I did everything I do at a show is six hour long video. If you want something to do for six hours, I can't believe how many people have watched it for the full six hours. We get to see the stats on YouTube and it's insane. How many people watch the whole thing? <laughs> now I watch the front of the foot, ignore the sewing machine needle, elbows down, shoulders relax, helping making sure the fabric doesn't get stuck. And go back to this one. Coming up on these, you guys should know what, what to do by now. You should be saying it out loud. Oh, increase stitch length so you don't get stuck from the foot catching on these stitching that we already did. I went longer than I should have. So I'm going to lift up, go back a little, and leave it at the length I had it on that was too long. So I don't fill it up too much. And now shorten it went back to what it should be, which is 0 0.6. So until you reach the point, 
stop the needle always up. Lift, push off the wire. Can't do that if the needle's down. I know it seems so weird if you've never seen me before to hear somebody say, leave the needle up when turning. But I'm right, because you're using my foot, not a regular satin stitch foot. It's uh, it's weird looking to not see someone struggle, putting their hands down and forcing the fabric around. First few times you see me sew, when you realize that you can sew without your back muscles getting tight from lifting your elbows, you can sew longer and not have as many mistakes. This will be the last stitch, tie knot. Lift, pull off the wire. Susan and Ellen, you guys should like chat inside the school. You've been chatting the whole time. It's like we're all hanging out in my sewing room together and you're all just having your little conversations. Now I'm gonna change to what color? What do you think I should do? Should I do another yellow? Or should I pull one of the colors that you see in this fabric? What should I do? Come on, you guys. Tell me, should I do like that color or green? I don't know. If I don't know, you guys gotta help me. Hi, Tinkerbell. Hi, Chase. I'm going to get, I thought I had all my colors selected, but I forgot to do that one. Ooh, I found one that's good. And you may have noticed that I didn't change my color of bobbin thread this whole time. And the reason I didn't have to, oh, I unplugged that camera. It keeps happening. I'm gonna be quiet for a minute. It won't be a whole minute, but it will be a little bit. I don't know why it likes to split the screen when I bring a camera in, but it does. And I got the wrong camera. Sorry about that. We have a touchy camera for the main one. And it's not showing me still come on there we go i thought i had that figured out but the slightest movement around that camera and disconnects so we got stuff arriving today as i said tinkerbell did you want to come say hi tink <laughs> she's distracted by something so i chose these two colors and then you guys tell me which one that you want me to do So this is like a burgundy and then a salmon, like a rusty salmon color. It's a good way to do it is to lay it down and make sure that you move it around so you can see which way the light would move. There we 
we go. Which one, left or right? Green would be nice too. I was actually thinking I should have put some leaves in this pattern. You actually could add some petals up here and have them be green. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. First one who answered, two of you, both of you want this one. I agree. We'll go with this one. I like how it kind of offsets that color too, or complements it. This is the last stitch. Have you guys had a good time today? 4.30, only two and a half hours. That's actually an improvement. If you're new to this show, I can go long sometimes. And if I had had a little bit more time, I could have even gone quicker because I would have had all my pieces already cut. Know that I will be gradually getting to that point once I lose one of my jobs right now I have too many jobs all involving my company creative feet all right you guys are getting to know each other really well okay here we go you're gonna be blown away have you ever, ever tried to sew a curve any of you have you struggled going around a curve before we well, saw that I did fine turn or their little tiny turns. Now we have this big curve to go. And this is similar to the drunkard's path, except for I'm using a zigzag stitch. And you can even do this curve with an overlock stitch. You can set a sleeve with this foot and overcast at the same time as setting in a sleeve. It's pretty impressive. There's so many things. So anytime you've ever tried to sew a curve, what should I do? I could do a different stitch, but it's all about satin stitch. I'm going to see about going a little wider. And if you go wider, you need to move the wire on the foot. And the instructions tell you how to do that. I've already done it. Please remember to add the address for your tripod. Oh, okay. Thanks for saying it again towards the end because the chats get really long. I haven't even been able to look at the last chat, last two chats. I lick my fingers a lot. Um, I once here, I'm not getting anything contaminated, by, but I really should have a damp washcloth. And that is something that I would do if I were just sewing by myself. I always have damp washcloth to get my fingers wet to make it s stickier when I need it. But I know you don't want to stare at me while I'm doing this, so I'm going to switch to the camera. Watching the front of the foot. Ignore everything else. I know what I'll do. I'll do a cup, since we have a little bit more time, I'll make this an enhanced stitch because it's so dramatic. And it's really not struggling to go over the satin stitches. So I'm not altering, and I'm at a 0 0.6 again. Ignore the sewing machine needle. <laughs> that was one of my clips. It vibrated off the table because I was just going so fast. These are the Clip It Clips. If you haven't got these yet, these are easier on your hands than other brands. And they have quarter inch marks on them. And the foot that you're looking at is our satin edge foot. And the satin edge foot. Comes packaged like you see here. Well, you will see here as soon as it decides to show up. <laughs> there we go. 
comes packaged in a reclosable container with four snap-on adapters. And what you see on the front of the package are the things that you have the instructions for when you purchase the foot all by itself. And what you see to the left are some of the stitches that you would use, a satin stitch. You can sew right on the raw edge of the fabric. You can sew straight and you can do scallops. It also is great for blanket stitch applique. It's also known as the magic foot. This foot also is your best friend for quilting. It helps you sew perfect quarter inch seam allowances as you see on the left. And the top right photo is stitching in a ditch. Now, when you do stitching in a ditch with the satin edge foot, you need to have your seams pressed to the side, not pressed open. And then this binding that you see on the bottom and the quilting you see there was done with the Octi hoops. Another product that we have. The Creative Feet come sold separate, but you can also buy them in special packages. The basic special and the one in the middle gives you four little booklets, three feet, and the accessory guides, which are guides that increase the capabilities of the sequins and ribbon foot. The other two are our educational specials, which include a book and a video. And I thought I had the sequin foot picture in here, but I don't. Rolls and piping foot is what we'll be using next week to sew piping on the pillow. Computer got slow. And the pearls and piping foot is the only foot that can sew all sizes of piping. Zippers, cord, chain, wire, braid, piping, or yarns that you can't squish flat with your fingers. And I'll continue sewing around this. Ah, got her. It's kind of like fishing. <laughs> I caught the puppy. There. There she is. <laughs> she was digging in all of my quilts and stuff. I have to adjust her area. Okay, here we go. And I can look at the comments again. So are you trying to get Ellen to move to uh, Arizona? It looks like that's what I'm saying. We have a dry heat. I live in the Prescott area. It's cool up here. When they're hot in Phoenix, I'm not so hot in Prescott area. Arizona is a varied state, lots of different areas to it. I agree, Cynthia, this does look better. I think the burgundy would have been too dark. Although I could switch to burgundy and do two more stitches on either side using the burgundy to add even more interest to it. Part of what I would teach is factories how to make things that they could sell for more money. I think it's pretty. What do you guys think? Should I stop? Or should I do one more thing? So that you guys can see one more thing that you can do. I kind of showed this last week. I'm moving the guide. And I'm changing my width to a one. And maybe I'll go to two. No one. And one is the width of this, the wire. And what I'm trying to do here is center the wire in the stitch. It might make you nervous, but it's really neat. Then you need to focus on something, figure out what you're going to look at. I'm increasing my stitch because I'm 
finding it not wanting to feed, but that's because it's sitting on the satin stitch. I should be wearing my glasses. Where'd they go? Got all distracted by the puppy. So I'm at a nine now, 0 0.9. And the needle's swinging over the, the actual pin and the foot is sitting on the satin stitch. So my focus isn't on the needle. It's kind of the space between the guide and the actual stitch. And ignore everything else. It's a gentle curve, keeping your eye right here. But we don't turn it too fast. If you move it too much or too fast, you can break your needle on the wire. Helping or supporting the fabric as it comes up, not pulling or pushing it through, especially not on this technique. And this is a technique that is based on Ooh, sewing over knitting needles. That was great. Now you know what the emergency alarm system is for your sewing machine. I stopped looking at the needle for a second. I had it pushed too far. So I'm going to take and I'm going to pull this out and cut the thread long. And then I'll pull that through to the back. May as well do it with you. This is what I get for showing more. Looking for my hand sewing needles. I don't use them very often. But I did just use them the other day. There we go. It's good for you guys to see me make a mistake now and then. And that noise is kind of scary if you've never had it happen before. But it's your machine protecting itself. So what it does is, the, is if the needle hits something hard, first off, the needles are designed to break at the eye of the needle, or like right above it, which is what happened. It did the right thing. The needle eye was stuck on, on the thread. So they're engineered, they're heated up in one spot so that if anything engages or stops the needle from going through, that it'll break at that spot, nowhere else. And that's to protect you from the needle tip falling or flying into your eye. And it keeps the sewing machine from the needle going down into the machine and having the hook catch it. And it's spinning around and ripping apart the underworkings of your sewing machine. That's one reason I don't really sell or, or recommend the titanium needle because the titanium needle is too strong. And it won't break as easy. I've seen some serious damage caused by them. So then I just bring that thread through. And I can start right where I left off and tie that off later on. And I need a new needle. 9014 Universal. Oh, it was a stretch needle. That's right. What did we do last week that I used a stretch needle? And it is more vulnerable to breakage than a regular 9014. Somebody has a sewing machine that needs repair. I wish I could fix all your sewing machines for you. Just like blink. There we go. So the stretch needle is flatter and weaker than the Universal's regular 9014. And I can't remember what I was doing last week where I used the stretch, but I did. What was I doing? I had fun. Oh, embroidering on a sweat on a t-shirt. And it was stretch fabric. So my machine has an alarm. And it also says this. The safety device has been activated. Is the thread tangled? Is the needle bent? <laughs> That's a little bit more reassuring. Does it seem like the camera's doing okay? Because I could stitch close. If it's not having trouble like it was. Cool. 
Be a good ending. I'm actually resting the sewing machine or the uh, camera tripod against the sewing machine, which should make it shake too much. But it seems to be okay. So lower the foot and thread the needle. Come on, thread. Oh, it's because I have to hit that button letting it know I fixed the... Did you see all that lint on the top of my needle threader? <laughs> oh my goodness, here we go. This is what the live is all about. Claire broke a needle. Second needle broken this season. Human error. I'm going to leave this tail long and I'm going to pull it through the back and tie the two ends together and it'll never come out. Now you can see what's really going on here and why I was able to break it. The bobbin thread I'll be able to pull down too. You won't, you won't see it. Okay. Stitch length. So the foot is actually riding over this right there. You can see through it. They were talking about on the news how many times people wash their hands a day. About nine times a day. I'm way more than that. So I got a little dry spot I'm embarrassed about. Watch the front of the foot. Ignore the needle. I'm looking through the cell phone camera again. This is so scary. Watch front of the foot. Watch front of the foot. Talking to myself. Whoop, watch the front of the foot. Don't look at that needle. It's so distracting. Especially when your screen is itty bitty. <laughs> Ignore everything else. Watch the front of the needle. So the the reason I broke my needle is because I moved the fabric too fast, and it it bent the wire inside the opening, changing where it is in relation to the needle. Sorry about that. Watch the front of the foot. Ignore the needle. Watch the front of the foot. And I do this, I coach myself. I invented it, but I have to coach myself. Watch front of the foot. That needle is super distracting. But all it does is mess you up if you watch it and hurt your neck and your back. So watch the front of the foot. Keep in the same space between the, the inside of the white guide and the edge of the stitch. Now I need to adjust it. That's how you do it so you don't break the needle. You stop and move it. If you went too far and stopped looking at the front of the foot, which is very tempting to watch that needle. I don't need to tie it off because I'm going all the way off and it's going to be sewn in the seam. Sorry about that. I'm taking it out before you could see it. Isn't that a nice little addition? Hello, everybody. Well, it's come to that time again. Every Thursday. Every Thursday, too, I go live. And every Thursday, at some point in time after, too, the show ends. And we've reached that point. If you're new to me and new to the show, be sure to check out the links in the description below. If you liked what you saw, please hit that like button. If you've yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. And next week, I'm going to make this into a pillow. What do you think? The pattern's free? And the pillow instructions will be added to the pattern, hopefully before next week. Do any of you have any questions before I close the show for today? And there's been some heavy conversation in the, in the chat today. I'll say a prayer for you, Ellen. And... Let's 
So it just seems like you guys are just getting to know each other and you have no questions. Apparently there's several people here from Arizona trying to convince Ellen to move here. You know that when you're in the school, you can see what students live near you. There's an option where you can do that. You click on members and then you click on near me and you can see people that I mean, you don't have the exact location of one another, don't worry. But it kind of lets you know that you're close to one another. And you might become really good friends. There's several groups of you that I notice are pairing off inside of the school. And it's really nice. Warms my heart. All right. One last look at the comments. Bye, everybody. I'm looking forward to a day off where I can just like not do anything. I don't know if I know how to do that, but I'm going to try. But the next day I, I feel like I have nothing to do. It's finish my quilt, <laughs> finish piecing the top. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed the class. I'll see you in the school. And remember, you can, inside of the school, you can actually watch this over again. The videos are, are embedded into the school. So you don't, you're not taken to YouTube. You just get to watch right there. And you can comment there, continue your questions. If, if after you actually go to make one of these, that you have questions as you're going, you can comment on the actual episode. And this is season two, episode 10. there's anything else I needed to remember something I always like to end with is that you know the only thing stopping you from doing anything creative is first the belief that you could do it the desire to want to learn because you may not want to do a sunflower pillow so then another pattern and using the same process maybe just right for you if the sunflower is not to your liking and then someone to create for oh, the tools, the foot, the stabilizers, the right needle, the right thread. All of these things come into play and they're very important. I know it may seem like we're trying to force products down your throat, but the products do make a huge difference in your success, especially your first time. If you do something the first time and you fail because you used bargain basement thread from 30 years ago, and the wrong needle and no stabilizer, you're not gonna like the result and then you may never wanna do it again. And usually we blame ourselves when anything goes wrong, like it's your skill or something and not the supplies, but it's the supplies, I guarantee you. The reason I look so good when I sew is because of the feet and they are a gift to me, is they're not just a gift to you. So the time to play, someone to sew for by besides ourselves, because sometimes we're just not as good to ourselves as we should be. And we're better to someone else. And now the time to play. I guess I want to play. I said it a couple of times. The time to play. You have to make the time. Get your sewing rooms ready. Clear the space. Even if you don't clear the whole room. Just a little bit so you can get to the machine. <laughs> and then make sure you go to bed early the night before and you're rested. And then take the first step. And then you can present your finished project in the school and share your picture with everybody else because you will succeed. And with that, I love you guys. See you next week, next Thursday to Mountain Standard Time. And you guys are going to spring forward soon, but I won't. So anytime you don't know what time it is in Arizona, just go, what time is it in Arizona in, the, in your search? And then you'll know what time it is in Arizona. Bye.